everybody. It's Pat the Wine Guy, and we're here at Aloro Vineyard with David Namarnik. David is the proprietor, the owner. He's the man. You're the man at Aloro. David, <laughs> thanks for having us out. Well, I'm delighted you're here. Um, it's fun to have you here in the middle of harvest. So you must go into harvest with a little bit of anxiety or anticipation, or you're looking forward to it. You're nervous. What what goes through? Well your said. Mind? Well said. <laughs> yes, I think I think any wine grower, as we get close to harvest, you're looking at the weather, of course, every day, sometimes by the hour. And this particular harvest, we've had a very unsettled weather pattern, so it's really been hard to discern. When, you know, is it going to rain or isn't it going to rain? And given we've had a relatively um, more typical Oregon growing year where we haven't had excessive heat and a little slower maturing. So obviously uh, letting that fruit hang on the vine is important to get the proper amount of maturity and and uh, getting the fruit to that perfect spot. So uh, so you're kind of watching that weather day to day. Oh, can we, is it is it going to be dry for one more day? That'll be perfect. So that's what we're looking for. We're just watching that weather and anticipating and, and uh, waking up at two in the morning. Uh, is that, do I hear raindrops on the roof? No, it's not raining. So uh, we actually, uh, so far this year, the, the harvest has been, has really turned out to be good conditions. And this is a contrast to what, in, at least in Oregon, what you've faced for the past, what, three, four, five years? It's yeah, been, yeah. I don't want to say the harvests have been on automatic pilot, but you've had conditions where they weren't as challenging as they are here in 2019. And that's true. Um, it really, the last five years, we've had these nice warm summers where the fruit was ripening early. And so because of that, with earlier bud break and then a warm growing season, the fruit matured quicker. We didn't have the challenges of worrying about rain going into harvest. We kind of decided that, you know, we'll pick when we need to pick because the weather isn't an issue. So it really made for very low stress harvest. To the wine drinker, mm -hmm. uh, you mentioned five warm harvests mm -hmm. in a row, five warm vintages, I should say. Uh, and some people have gotten used to that style of mm -hmm. Oregon Pinot Noir. Anticipate what's this, what's 2019 Oregon Pinot Noir going to taste like? Um, boy, that's a, that's a great question. I, I always, um, what I love about p growing Pinot Noir in Oregon particularly is that every vintage is going to reflect that year. It's kind of like a time capsule. It's a little snapshot in time. It's a particular place. It's a particular vineyard. There's particular people involved in managing that vineyard. And that's going to manifest itself in that bottle and, of course, the way the wine is made. So you're really cl collecting this time capsule of that particular vintage and how boring would it be if every vintage was identical? I think this particular vintage is going to be, a, I'm, I'm, I'm very excited about it because we've had these ideal growing conditions during the year, relatively aside from the rains, we had some rains, but we had a mild growing season. And I think those temperate growing seasons are more typical of Oregon, I guess you'd say. Um, it really allows the fruit to gain a lot of complexity and retain natural acidity that really I think gives you the elegance and sophistication that Oregon Pinots are known for. There's a saying in the wine business that a wine grower, winemaker has maybe 30 or 40 shots at it. Yeah, that's exactly right. I've always am jealous of the guys that make beer and they can make a new batch every week and we really get one shot at it. You get one shot to grow the grapes and you get one shot to make the wine. And I can honestly tell you when I'm walking up and down the blocks and we're getting closer to harvest, you know, sometimes you second guess yourself. Did I manage that block the way I should have? Could I have done something different? One of our core values is, you know, continuous improvement and innovation. And so always looking at, did I do the best job I could have done that block? So yeah, you could get one shot. Yeah, that's that's it. One, one go. And there's not a dress rehearsal. Is that is that pressure that you, I, yeah, I mean? Yeah, I think, yeah, I think so. I, I think there's, it's definitely, um, if you really care about what you're doing, yeah, you're, you're going to stress a little bit over it. Definitely. I think if I stress about anything, you know, as far as what we do here at Aloro, it's going to be just, did we do the best job we could this year? To that end, you get to know every row that you've got it here in your vineyard, don't you? I do. I do. We, um, we have uh, just under 34 acres of um, grapes growing on the site. And I walk every block um, multiple times a week up and down. I walk because there's no better way to see the vineyard and what's going on is to walk the blocks and a um, great way to get some exercise, great way to kind of clear my head, but also a great way to see what's going on because I really believe that in the end, the, the vintage we're going to produce this year, it's really a culmination of lots of little decisions along the way. And I think that doing the right things at the right time 
is you know key to maximizing the success. And unless you're out there looking, you know, it might be sometimes one or two days can make a big difference on doing something in the vineyard. So you walk those blocks and you look and you pay attention. And um, that's just what wine growing is all about is being part of the whole process. We're already prognosticating about how we, how good we think the vintage is going to be. It's, oh, it's very exciting. It's a very fun part of the process. Yeah, that's great. Uh, we're excited too. I'm, I'm looking forward to see how 19 turns out. We know what 15 was. We know what 16 was. We're tasting 17. That final, final question. When will we know uh, how 2019 turns out? When will we be able to drink uh, uh, the fruits of your labor? Yeah, uh, well, so the, the 19s will go into barrel this fall. And then we'll um, bottle those a year later, 11 months later, they'll go into bottle. And then we'll release those a year later, so really a couple of years down the road. So uh, stay tuned, as they say. Exactly. We have two years to find out. Uh, can't wait. That'll yeah. be great. Thank David, you. thank you so much for your time. This is great. Uh, Laurel Vineyards, love coming out to this place. Uh, it's Pat the Wine Guy, everybody. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.